Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. This week we bring you Dominaria United! Late joined us for some games with Rodrigo's list for Shanna Purifying Blade, a bent list that uses Shanna's card draw to consistently apply pressure and protect it. Bal built a Shanir Slipper Scourge, a list based on Dockside Loops through Curio or eventually Breach. Eller created a Mirius Scholar of Antiquity, a rural artifact based storming list attempting to ping his opponents to death. And finally, the video piloting Alchemists and Crab Waves list for Volhar, Vodal and Desecrator. A Doomsday list able to draw the whole library through the Isorev loops and win with Jace or Thoracle. Late is going first at Mulligan once, finding a single Peluk to Delta, but with a Sol Ring, Noble Hierarch and Elvis Spirit Guide for Ramp, allowing for a turn to Yasharn, finding him the two basics of his deck and from there he can pivot his game plan with Neoform and Greensand Zenith. Baal was unfortunately to Mulligan down to 6, finding a Plateau and a Tomb of Rami. Despite not going first, he actually sends Gemstone Caverns to the bottom, because alongside Mox Diamond it means he would be down to only 4 cards in hand, 3 mana on turn 1 but not much to use it on, as he would lose access to 2 pieces from the 3 you see below, Face Breaker is the way to generate mana and see my card draw, while Wish Claw Talisman can find him almost anything since he has an opposition agent to back it up. Elder Mulligan once, and didn't want to go lower, having Misty Rainforest, Skull in Tarn and a Forest for Lands, with a Carpet of Flowers for Ramp. Codex Shredder can deny tutors to the top, as well as serve as in mocks with his commander. Glimpse of Nature allows him to draw his deck with Sabertooth loops and he has Red Elemental Bass for protection. Last but not least, Divi kept his first and versatile 7, Bloodstained Mire and Polluted Delta for lands, with a Fellow Stone for ramp, Mental Misstep for stack interaction, Dramatic Reversal only needs Isochron Scepter and Diabolic Intent can help on that, and he still has Rhystic Study to maintain his card flowing or stacks the table. Ready for the match? Before the game starts, Bal goes out of his way to show that he bottom his Gemstone Caverns. Lid then starts his turn with a Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Tundra. He casts his Sol Ring and passes. Bal draws, plays a Plateau and then casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Tomb of Arami. He casts his Wish Claw Talisman and passes. Elder plays a Misty Rainforest and cracks it for a Taiga, and then casts a Carpet of Flowers. He goes to his second main phase, adding one brown mana with it to cast a Codex Shredder, ending his turn. David simply plays a Bloodstained Mire and passes. Leith draws and exiles his Elvish Spirit Guide for green mana to help cast Yasharn, Implacable Earth. In response to it, David cracks his fetch for a tapped Watery Grave. Yasharn enters and triggers, and Lid searches for his basic forest, since the basic planes he just drew it this turn. He plays a snow covered forest and casts his noble hierarch and passes. Ball top decks nicely, he casts a Sarah Ascendant right away, mentioning already its aim at later. He plays Shinka the Blood Soaked Keep and then activates his Wish Claw Talisman. He searches for a mana crypt and gives the talisman to David. He casts the mana crypt and then passes. In the end step, Ella activates the Shredder targeting Late, and a shared summons is milled quite on time. Elder draws and adds one red mana with his carpet, he plays a forest and casts his commander Maria, Scholar of Antiquity. He then uses the Shredder to tap for green and casts a Senses Divining Top, passing the turn. David gets his turn, plays an Underground Sea and casts his commander Vohar Vodal and Desecrator. He still casts a Mox Ember and then passes the turn. Late plays a Bountiful Promenade and goes to combat, attacking David for 5 with an Exalted Bar. In his second main phase, he casts a Green Sun Zenith, X equals 2, and Bal responds by flashing in his opposition agent. This way, Bal controls late, looking at his hand, and after taking a look at the decklist, he gets himself a Bloom Tender, and eventually late pass is pretty sad about it. Bal rolls and takes 3 from the crypt. He casts his professional Facebreaker and then goes into combat, sending Oppo towards the vid and Ascendant towards late, triggering Facebreaker twice for 2 treasures. He then casts late's Bloom Tender and passes. In the end step, Elder uses Sensei's top to tap for green and activate itself to arrange the top 3 cards. He gets to his turn and adds double red from his carpet, with which he casts a Quicksmith Genius. He then casts a Memnite, entering and triggering Quicksmith Genius to discard and draw a card. He plays an Inventor's Fair and then activates Sensei's top to arrange the top 3. He then activates Maria, tapping 2 artifacts to exile the top card and play it this turn, and it's a Sol Ring. Quicksmith triggers and he discards a Glimpse of Nature and draws a card. He attacks the feed for 3 and ends his turn. David plays a Gemstone Caverns and then casts a Failor Stone. He follows it with a Rhystic Study and passes. Late plays a Snow Covered Plains and ponders for a second. He casts Angel of Destiny and then goes into combat. He attacks the Vid with his Exalted Commander, gaining 4 from the lifelink, and then both him and the Vid gain 4 life from the Angel Trigger. He proceeds to his end step, triggering his commander and paying 2 mana to draw 2 cards, ending his turn. Bal once again loses his Crypt Roll. He attacks late for 6 in the air, hoping to maintain him out of the 50 life threshold. Facebreaker triggers for 1 treasure and then Bal casts an Esper Sentinel, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. 
He then casts his commander Shiny Sleeper Scourge, triggering Wistic once again and paying for it. He passes and on his end step, Eller activates his Sensei Stop, rearranging the cards before going to his turn. Eller and Taps gains one life from Inventor's Fair and draws. He adds two red mana once again from Carpet. He taps his Sensei Stop to draw a card this time. He now casts a Beast Whisperer, triggering Wistic and paying for it. He then activates Maria, tapping two artifacts to exile the top card, which is Sensei Stop, and he casts it, triggering Wistic and Sentinel, and he pays only for Wistic but not for Sentinel. It enters, triggering Quicksmith, and he opts not to discard anything. He then attacks the Vid for 6 and passes. The Vid is pretty much locked out of the game due to the opposition agent, so he simply passes the turn. Late draws, plays a mana confluence and goes to combat right away. The Vid is on Nos and Late attacks him, knowing that he doesn't matter much due to the Angel of Destiny, but he does gain 14 life back with this, and commander damage can still kill the Vid. In the second main phase he casts a Lenore Elves, triggering Ristic and paying for it. He follows it with a mana crypt, triggering Sentinel and Ristic and paying only for Ristic since Val has few cards in hand. He then goes to his end step and pays 5 to draw 5 cards. With 7 in hand, he passes. Ball rolls and keeps being slapped for 3. He draws and goes to combat, slamming all 4 creatures towards late, for 13 damage. Facebreaker triggers and he gets another treasure. In the second main phase, he casts a Demonic Tutor, triggering Ristic and paying for it. He searches for a Cut Ribbons, which he casts right away to deal 4 damage to Yasharn. Ristic triggers and he pays. Yasharn is dead, so he can now activate Facebreaker, exiling the top card. He cracks another treasure and finds a Gemstone Caverns, which he plays, triggering Shanid to draw a card and lose one life. He then casts a Mikaios the Lunark, X equals 2, triggering Ristic and paying for it, and triggering Shanid to draw another card and lose one life. He then casts a Lion's Eye Diamond, triggering Ristic and not paying this time, in case he'll need to fight on the stack with his Red Blast or Facebreaker activations. In the end step, Eller activates his Sensei Stop and gets to his turn. Elder gains one life from the Inventor's Fair and draws. He adds double red with carpet and casts a Reckless Fire River, triggering Beast Whisper and Ristic, and he pays for it. He draws and then casts a Mox Opal, triggering Ristic and Esper Sentinel, and he pays for both. Reckless Fire River and Quicksmith Genius both trigger, and he discards to draw, and then his opponents take one damage from Fire River. He then activates Sensei Stop to draw a card, and follows it with Merry Activation, tapping two artifacts to be able to recast Sensei Stop. He does so, triggering Ristic, and he pays for it. However, this Sensei's loop is digging a lot for Elder while pinging the table, so the Vid responds with a Force of Negation, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. In response, though, Elder casts a Red Elemental Blast on the Force, triggering Ristic and unable to pay. In response still, the Vid casts his Mental Misstep, but Elder still has a ward in the matter, casting a Free Deflecting Swat, triggering Ristic and unable to pay. He changes the target of Force of Negation to Mental Misstep, and Sensei's Stop resolves triggering Fire Weaver for another ping. Elder still casts Ornithopter, triggering Whisperer and Ristic, and he doesn't pay for it. He draws from Whisperer and it resolves, triggering Quicksmith and Fire Weaver. His opponents take one and he decides not to damage with Quicksmith, since he only has two cards in hand. He then casts a Welding Jar, triggering Ristic and he pays for it, resolving and triggering Fire Weaver for another ping, and opting not to damage with Quicksmith, passing with one card in hand. The Vid plays an Exotic Orchard and with Mnemonic Betrayal at hand starts to consider casting it to get access to Cut from Ball's Graveyard to get rid of Opposition Agent, but that's too mana intensive so he decides to pass once again, hoping to find other answers or more mana. Lady Screed decides to slap him and his quest for 55 life keeps far in the horizon. He plays an untapped Temple Garden and goes to combat, once again attacking the Vid for 7 damage, which doesn't quite bother due to the Angel of Destiny. Late does gain 10 life and proceeds to his end step, triggering his commander and paying 6 mana to draw 6 cards. He discards a bunch at cleanup and we're back to Ball's turn. His script only knows one thing, and that's pain. 12 damage already from it. He goes to combat and sends all creatures but Esper Sentinel towards Late, and the Sentinel towards the Vid. No one blocks and Ball activates Mikaios, removing a counter from him and putting a plus one plus one counter on each other creature he controls. Facebreaker triggers and he gets 2 treasures, and activates it in the second main phase. He finds a Cloudstone Curio, which he casts right away, triggering Ristic and paying for it. He only needs to find Dockside now, so he cracks another treasure, exiling a Lurus. Now he fires his Red Elemental Blast on Ristic Study, hoping to storm a bit. He does pay for its trigger and it resolves. Now he casts Lurus, triggering Shanid to draw a card and lose one life. It resolves and triggers Cloudstone Curio, returning Mikaios back to his hand. He plays a Blood Crit and then casts a Praetor's Grasp, targeting the feed with it. He searches for a Demonic Tutor. He casts a Jewel Lotus and then cracks his LED for triple black mana and casts the Demonic Tutor. The Vid responds by activating his commander Vohar, drawing and discarding a Wish Claw of his own. 
He passes priority, but still in response to that, later flashes in an Avon Mind sensor. And still has another ward in the matter, an Endurance, triggering and targeting Ball to deprive him of his LED to prevent abuse from Lurus. Ball looks at the top 4, but doesn't find much, only a Rosnak, Hair of Groga, triggering Shani to draw a card and lose one life, and eventually he's forced to pass with nothing to do with his black mana. In the end step still, Eller activates his Senses top to rearrange the top and still activates it to draw a card, before going to his turn. He gains another life thanks to Inventor's Fair, draws and adds double red from his carpet trigger. He casts a Sensei's top, and while there's no Rhystic study, as per Sentinel is now a 2 2, so Elder doesn't pay 2 for it, as Ball is tapped out. Quicksmith and Fireweaver both trigger. They take 1 damage and he discards a card to draw a card. He then casts an Instrument of the Bards, pinging everyone again, and he responds to the Quicksmith's trigger, activating Sensei's top to draw a card. He discards a Veil and draws the top which he casts again, picking everyone again and responds to the trigger by activating the top to draw a card again. He discards and draws the card. He goes ahead with another cast, another ping, and in response to the quicksmith trigger he activates Sensei's top to draw, but now late responds to it by evoking a Solitude, pitching an Esper Sentinel. It enters and it targets Quicksmith Genius, to hopefully stop this nonsense. In response though, Elder casts a free Noxious Revival, targeting his Deflecting Sword to be put on top of his deck. In response to it, though, David casts a desperate dramatic reversal, triggering Sentinel, and since Ball can find a deflecting sword, he doesn't pay for it. He untaps his non land permanence and activates his commander to draw a card, and discarding a windfall, so he gains one life and his opponents lose one. He found something, but lets this resolve. Elder then activates Miria, tapping two artifacts to exile the sword from the top, and casts it for free, changing the target of Solitude to Ball's Esper Sentinel. Since his top activation finally resolves, and with his draw, Elder opts not to resolve Quicksmith's trigger, as he puts the only card he has in hand on the stack, a Wheel of Misfortune. Everyone chooses their votes, and Elder voted 10, while David voted 0, keeping his interaction up. Elder then plays his Reflecting Pool and casts his Foundry Inspector, which was one of the pieces he was digging for. He draws one from Beast Whisperer, and upon resolving, Fire River pings his opponents, and Quicksmith lets him rummage. He now casts his Senses Divining Top for 0, and David reveals his Trap Card, a Mind Break Trap, which can't even be protected by a Veil at this point. The top is exiled for good. Elder then casts a Mox Diamond that he drew, discarding a Treasure Vault. It enters, pinging his opponents, and he then rummages with Quicksmith. He follows it with a Torment Script, pinging his opponents again and rummaging again. He now casts a Mystic Forge for another ping and another rummage. The top card is a land, so activates the forge, exiling it, paying one life. He casts Lotus Petal for the same old triggers, but eventually he hits a brick wall. He then goes into combat and attacks with all creatures towards the vid for lethal. He passes, but still in the end step, late casts a Noxious Revival on his Solitude to be put on top, but Elder cracks his Thomas script to exile Late's graveyard, as a creature tutor from late could mean the game is over. Late takes three from his script once again, and is hanging from a rope. He plays a Gemstone Caverns and casts a Finale of Devastation, X equals 10. Thanks to the Opposition Agent, Ball controls his search and exiles Walking Ballista, just in case. Late is not bothered, as all he wanted was to pump his creatures for 10, and he proceeds to combat, sending all his terrestrial creatures towards Elder and the Angel towards Ball, who has no flying blockers. Angel of Destiny has a triggered ability, not a replacement effect, therefore Elder dies before the trigger even resolves. Late gains so much life that he proceeds to his end step to trigger the angel and kill Ball with it. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Yashar just keeps on wrecking tables, and the early opposition agent denied a turn 3 victory from the vid. Miria proved to be a gruel joyra, and while Rodrigo tried to be light on stacks, Shanna shined with her ability to draw plenty, 13 cards total in 3 turns. Late was kept in check due to Sarah Ascendant, but eventually Finale of Devastation was enough to steal this one with Angel of Destiny. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Kitty Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katarina, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, Zinan, Nugan Smith, and CJ Wally, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!